Centaur mass is a fundamentally important anatomical and biomechanical variable in studying human movements. But how do we find it? Last time we talked about how the center of mass can be manipulated by the configurations of your body. So the trick of finding a point of balance you learned in your physics class no longer applies. But keep this method in mind. There were roughly three ways that we can get at the position and the trajectory of the center of mass that I can think of. And each one comes with its own assumptions and limitations. The first one is using the established segment parameters published in the literature. Some researchers have already gone through the painstaking task of measuring the center of mass of each of the body segments, and therefore the center of mass of the entire body is simply a weighted sum of all of the individual body segments. However, this assumes that the center of mass for the segments for the initial research matches your current research. Therefore, it is very important to choose which of the segment parameters based on the people you are studying. The second method is a volumetric method, which uses some way to get at the shape and the volume of each of the body segments, which then allows them to estimate where the center of mass is within that specific shape. So one popular shape to model the human body is a cylinder, but it's not really a cylinder, right? So the assumption in this method is that the segments of your bodies for your participants follow a specific shape, as well as the density distribution of your bones, tendons and your soft tissues all follow a similar kind of distribution that they can easily model. But the limitation in this method is in assuming that the segment follows a specific shape for all of your participants as well as a specific density distribution. But we all know the bones doesn't weigh the same as the tissues and the muscles and the tendons etc etc. A third method is using the Newton's laws by measuring using the force plates to get the trajectory of your center of mass. This works because Newton's laws tells us how the movement of our center of mass is dictated by the net force acting on it. So once we know the ground reaction forces minus the center of mass to get the net force, then we can know where the center of mass is going, if anywhere. But this actually requires a starting position for your center of mass. So for example, if I'm staying still in this position, or squatted all the way down, so long if, as I'm not moving, the force plates won't be able to tell a difference from my starting position. But once you have that, as soon as there is movement, we can use the forces to reconstruct the trajectory of the center of mass. And this has been used in tasks where it's mostly vertical movements, so it's very easy to capture everything within the force plates with your force data. So all in all, there are no perfect way to tackle this metric of getting at the center of mass of the body. So all we can do is our best and acknowledging the limitations while pushing the science forward.